What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a video that a lot of you guys have been requesting, and it is one of my brand new car. So I've had it for about a month now, I didn't just want to like get it and start filming videos of it, I want to like get a feel for it, and in this video we're going to go through like the first impressions, some of the features and options, um, my decision making process of which one to get when my lease on the BMW was up, and just like generally what I think about it. So obviously this is all thanks to you guys watching these videos over the years, and I just want to say thank you. And if if you guys want to see more car videos like the Porsche Taycan one that we did last year, I plan to do like a full review of this as well as videos of like electric cars. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and also leave a comment down below as to which car you would like to see me grab to review in the next year or so. So the car that I went with was a Mercedes CLA 45 AMG. And it is a new redesigned model for 2021. And when I was going into like the decision making process of which car to get, I was honestly like pretty open-ended in terms of what I was looking for. Um, when I was looking for cars in the past, I didn't really go with the one that I thought I was going to. Um, I ended up trying a few and my car that I had before was the 4 Series Grand Coupe, which had a great amount of storage. It wasn't like fast or anything, but it had like a decent amount of luxury. It was a decent price as well. And I was trying to decide if I should go with like a Tesla Model 3 because I drove that and absolutely loved it. I was also looking at the Porsche Panamera, but it was a bit out of my price range. And um, the Taycan was definitely in the consideration, but obviously that is pretty expensive and being a first generation electric car. But let's go ahead and hop in and talk a bit more about it. So one of the biggest factor when it came to choosing a new car was the interior. One thing that Mercedes has done well for quite a while now is the interior. And just look at this, um, it just has like a very elegant look to it. It has a ton of technology, it's got two screens and the whole vent thing looks great. At night you've got the LEDs. But you can see here it's got the red stitching, it's got an Alcantara mix on the steering wheel. I love the steering wheel, um, it also has like the flat bottom. and. Aside from like the occasional creaking and stuff like that, I do really enjoy the interior. It is a little bit more compact than what I had before, but I think it overall has like a very high-end look, a ton of technology. It's got Apple CarPlay. The MBUX system is something that I'm gonna talk a little bit more about in the full review, but otherwise, just take a look at the inside and I would say I'm really happy with my choice in that aspect. So just going over the outside of the car, here are some of the things that I chose when I was specking it out. And as I mentioned, I haven't taken this car in for any work. Uh, the windows still have to be tinted, a little bit of chrome delete on the badging and also the door handles. But the first and biggest thing I think is the paint. And this is a paint color that I've seen in the past and I absolutely love it. It's called the Dezino Magno Gray. I probably absolutely destroyed that name. Um, but my favorite color for cars is the chalk one that Porsche makes. The Nardo Gray on Audis looks really good. And just like a simple black. Um, but on my previous cars I've gone with a gray. I just feel like it's a little bit more unique and this paint is definitely unique. A lot of people are going to say you probably could have just gotten a wrap and it's going to be more durable. Uh, this paint is definitely one that you don't want to scratch because the whole car is probably going to have to be repainted. Um, but I just love the matte finish. It is able to hide watermarks very nicely because I live in a place that rains a lot. So, so far I'm really happy with the paint decision, but if you really want to be careful with it, then paint protection film in a satin finish will probably be a good idea. Some of the other things to note are the AMG rims in a matte black color. I think that matte black rims are definitely a must and I think these look really good. They also have the center locking wheel locks which is the same as like Formula One cars in terms of appearance. Just some other things, it's got the turbo formatic badge. It is a all-wheel drive vehicle and in terms of the spin of the car I think it looks pretty good. The front especially and its grille just really stands out. I don't plan to chrome delete the front. Um, on the side it's got like a nice slope to it. It's not the longest car out there but Overall, I feel like it is a decent size, super easy to take around town as a daily. Um, and on the back, it kind of rounds off. It's got the black trim. Uh, one thing that I did select was the Chrome Delete package, and I believe that is about $700 in the US. But one thing that was a little bit strange is that even with the Chrome Delete package, it still comes with silver trim on the door handles. So that is a bit strange, but this area obviously is all chrome deleted, and a lot of times you have the option just to wrap it and it'll look pretty much the same. 
On this side, of course, you have the rear spoiler, and I think the back end rounds up quite nicely. There's also all of the sport trim on the bottom. And one thing that um, actually I saw in the reviews is that it is a fake exhaust. There is kind of one that ends right there, and this is just like a bit of a trim piece, and it also makes some exhaust sound on the inside. And the reason why it has like the artificial exhaust sound as well is because of European regulations. So in terms of sound, it sounds pretty good, but it definitely isn't a car to get if you want like a loud sounding uh, sports car. So I have to say the front of the car is probably my favorite part of it and as soon as I saw photos of this model in this color I pretty much went with the exact photo of their marketing material in terms of the options that I chose it just has like a very aggressive and sporty look to it and the matte paint goes very well with the gloss black trim so now we're gonna hit the road and talk about a couple things uh, one of them being how I like the car so far after about a thousand kilometers and a month of driving I'm also gonna talk about like my decision-making process why I didn't get a Tesla like a lot of you guys had predicted um, the things that I like about it and maybe others that I may have noticed and just for those who care about like the car specs this right here is running a four-cylinder engine that has 382 horsepower it is the AMG handcrafted and some might call it like a fake AMG or whatever just because of where it is in the lineup honestly whether you think it's fake or not I don't really care that much I was just looking for a, a nice daily driver yeah one of the biggest reasons why I went with this car is because of the interior it just looks like futuristic, uh, very elegant. Uh, the vents and everything look kind of cool. You've got a ton of screen right here, uh, two of them to be exact. The steering wheel looks nice. And when I saw the photos of the interior, I really didn't have anything that I didn't like about it. Um, it also obviously has Apple CarPlay and it has wireless charging, which doesn't really work that well. Um, the speaker system is the Burmester one that was included in one of the packages, but Sound quality, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. And of course, you've got the LEDs, which I think looks really, really good. So when I turn on the car, um, there's a few different settings that I play with. It hops onto my mode automatically, um, but I can press the button right here and it allows you to change your driving mode from the steering wheel, whether that is comfort, sport, sport plus, and individual, which is my custom settings of like the driving modes for like day to day. You can also change some of the other variables on this side of the steering wheel, which is really nice. Um, so let's just put it in a drive here and uh, let's go for it. So I actually ordered this thing back in March and it took until the end of December to get here, which is quite a long time. Uh, all the COVID delays, it being handcrafted, the customs and all that stuff, I'm sure played a factor into it. Uh, but it was the first time I ordered a car uh, brand new. And so yeah, it did take uh, quite a while. Um, by the way, if you guys are wondering why I didn't make any videos for the past couple weeks, I got all my wisdom teeth out. So I was looking pretty stupid for quite a while, um, about a week and a half. So now we're all good. We're back and making videos. The renovation for the office is literally going to be done this week and I promise that this time. Uh, also I have another project coming up that I'm really excited to show you guys. So I know in January I didn't upload it that much but I know um, that's the typical thing. It's a little bit of a slow time but trust me I want to upload the same amount if not more um, than last year and we really hope to improve the quality of our content as well. So if you guys are excited for some more car content, cinematic reviews, um, home and style and also obviously tech which is the main part of the channel Make sure you subscribe, drop a like on this video, and also follow me over on Instagram at justin.tse because I post um, everything there first. Uh, I posted this car there first a couple weeks ago. Um, I've had this car for a month, but I just don't really like to get new things and just film them right away, um, unless it's tech because it's my job. I wanna just like get a feel for it a little bit and um, just enjoy it before we make any content of it. So I did select like an artificial sound, which I think simulates some of the sound through the uh, speaker. It is not the loudest car just because of the European regulations. But the first thing that I really noticed as soon as I picked up the car is that the steering is really, really good. It just feels great. The car is pretty well balanced. And I mean, for the size, it's not really gonna like sway or anything, um, but it drives very, very well. And I just love the feel of this. Um, in terms of seat options, you have quite a few. You have the option to go with the comfort seats or also the upgraded sports seats, the AMG ones, which are more bucket style. What, from what I heard, it's not very comfortable um, compared to these ones. So I decided not to go with that. Um, and when it comes to the comfort seats, you have the free option, which is this one right here. Uh, it's a mix of Alcantara and leather. There's also a full leather one, which is a mix of the gray and black two-tone, which I didn't really like at all. But you also have the choice to go with real Napa leather, which is about a couple thousand dollars, 
but with the leather seats you do have the choice to get cooled seating which is something that I do like but I live in Canada so it's not like I'm gonna need to use it very often um, but yeah the stock Alcantara option I think is a good mix of sporty and also comfort and it also carries over to the steering wheel as well where you have Alcantara right here Time is going to tell whether or not that is durable, I don't really know yet, but so far it feels really good, it looks good, it has like a red stitch trim to go with it as a contrasting color, and no complaints. Uh, in terms of space, if you're tall you might have some problems, your head might touch the, the ceiling of the car, um, your knees might have a bit of problem, the passenger seat um, had a buddy who was 6'4 sitting in it and didn't really fit that well, but I'm not that tall so... I feel like this is a really good size. Um, as for cargo, that is something that I did give up a little bit of coming from the 4 Series Grand Coupe. Uh, you don't really get these cars for a lot of cargo, um, but the seats do fold down to go all the way through. So if you want to put like luggage and stuff, you can totally still fit some stuff. Going on to like the MBUX, the tech side of things, and also the speakers, the interface is really, really good. It looks good, you can customize all the settings and stuff um, visually and also functionally. Um, the MBUX has a lot of input methods. Uh, you have your touch screen, you also have a trackpad down here, you also have a touch pad on the steering wheel for both sides. I personally am used to having like a mechanical dial and I feel like a lot of times I do like that input method because it is just very reliable and more accurate. I don't really like like the whole touch pads and all those things. It works and when it comes to like the actual tech side of things um, in the system, it has um, data that is built in. You can also use Apple CarPlay, but it only works with the port right here. And I find the Apple CarPlay is something that I started using a bit more. I didn't really use it on my previous car. On the other side of things, speakers are very important when it comes to uh, what I prioritize in a car. I just like to listen to music. I don't really care about all the extra tech and stuff but the speakers are the Burmester ones that were part of a package that had a few other upgrades and I was kind of excited. I was like, Burmester, that's a big name. Um, usually it costs thousands of dollars, like six, 7,000 in Porsches and also higher end uh, Mercedes options. They call it like the 3D Burmester system. But the Burmester in this one is kind of just one that is branded as Burmester, but it doesn't really sound that good in my opinion. Um, I was definitely surprised. It sounds like a stock speaker in a mid to high end German car. Um, and there wasn't really an option to upgrade beyond this. Uh, I would say if you're like excited about a Burmester speaker in the CLA 45 AMG in that package, don't get your hopes too high. It doesn't sound anything crazy. It's pretty much just like a little sticker brand name right there. As for the wireless charging, is definitely like an additional feature in the vehicle. Um, and I usually just plug it in via a cable, but the wireless charging doesn't really work that well. It is, um, I mean, the spot for the phone is pretty much the same size as a phone. Um, it's not like large or anything, but I do find that you kind of have to like fiddle with it to ensure your phone actually gets any charge from that. So that is kind of another observation. Other than that though, on the tech and interface side of things, I feel like this car is like a really good blend of being future-proof for the next few years to come while also being relatively easy to use. Um, I say relatively because it does take a bit of time to figure out the driver profiles, the um, custom settings and like the experience because it seems like Mercedes has kind of divided the driving and experience side of things and comfort side when it comes to your custom modes. So they don't really overlap and sync as you would expect. You do have to kind of enable each one here and there, which some people are going to enjoy a lot if you want to change the modes. But personally, I just like hop in and drive around day to day. So it would have been easier to kind of have everything a bit more unified. So when it comes to the drive itself, when I first got the car, the first thing that I noticed is that it definitely has like the sport feel to it. You feel quite a bit of the bumps on the road um, and I feel like it does have a good balance. I drive it mostly in the comfort mode. I occasionally you can put it in a sport, but even in the comfort mode, you have a good level of stiffness in the steering, great handling. Uh, it is relatively smooth, but you do still get a feel for the bumps and you have a lot of different dynamics that you can change in the suspension and everything and customize it. There's also a track package option that you can get for the car that increases the top speed. You can also get carbon ceramic brakes, but I feel like this car is um, what I was hoping for when I, when I ordered it. I didn't actually test drive any Mercedes car prior to this. This was also a new model, so they didn't have like just showroom models sitting around. Um, so I went ahead and ordered it and I feel like with any car and as a daily driver you can get used to it after a couple days But 
I can tell you that after putting about a thousand kilometers on it, it feels really, really good. And I'm gonna have more observations um, in the full review, but so far, I really, really like the driving experience. So one of the biggest questions that I've been getting uh, from the start when I was trying to get you guys to predict which car I ordered, um, as well as after I got it, was why didn't I get a Tesla? And I've got a couple reasons for that. I test drove the Tesla after I ordered this car, and honestly, I wasn't really expecting much of like the Model 3. But after I drove it, I had so much fun with it, and I can almost say that was probably the most fun that I have had in a car to date. I just kept wanting to drive it around. It almost felt like a good city go-kart, super fast, super Super simplistic, handling was amazing, and I don't know, I, I can definitely see myself owning a Tesla or electric car in the future. As you guys know, I, we do, did also review the Porsche Taycan on the channel, and that was really, really fun, but a bit out of my price range um, for like a daily car. And the other thing that I was trying to keep in mind was that I live on an island, there's only one supercharger for the Tesla. Um, the condo that I live in doesn't have a charging system yet, and I know some areas are much more developed than others when it comes to electric vehicle infrastructure. So with that kept in mind, and also the fact that I sometimes don't drive for like five days at a time, and like the, the battery retention and everything, the Tesla side just didn't really make too much sense right now. And I know there's still many models coming out and all that. Um, and on the Porsche side of things, uh, not only was it out of the price range, but it was still relatively new. They were working on the first generation, um, just launching some more models. So I definitely considered both those options. And I know for content, a Tesla would have been a way better investment. But I think for the next like three to four years at least, I'm gonna be sticking to a vehicle like this uh, before I make the jump to electric. But I do believe my next car will be fully electric, I believe. Um, don't mark my word on it, but I, I do think there's a good chance. It's been developing very fast. And um, as someone in tech industry, I do tend to keep up with a lot of it on an everyday basis. The only other car that I actually test drove when I was looking at different options was the BMW M5 and also the Porsche Panamera. And coming from a BMW, I didn't really have any problem with it. I did feel like the interior was kind of like whatever, but the BMW M5 for what I was looking for was just too expensive. Same with the Porsche Panamera. Um, when it comes to pricing, this car in Canada came out with all the options to about $89,000. Um, in the US, that's probably gonna be in the mid 60s. And I was looking for an upgrade for my previous car, so this is about $25,000 more, and I feel like it is a significantly better vehicle, but I didn't want to move too far into like the 100s uh, just for the amount that I drive. And obviously cars are not the best investments. Um, I do tend to try to buy things that increase in value over time. Watches have been a decent investment over shoes. Real estate obviously is something that is relatively investable, um, but I do feel like Sometimes you gotta just buy stuff that you like and um, the car is definitely one of those things that I just like a nice car and decided to, to go with it. But if I wanted to make my money back, a Tesla probably would have been the best option because you know some YouTubers are making videos on their Teslas like all the time and I personally watch those videos a lot just out of curiosity. So when it came to my decision between like leasing or buying a vehicle, this is kind of uh, the way I look at it. I know it's gonna be different for everyone and usually I don't like like renting or that kind of stuff. Um, but with a car, whether you buy it or you lease it, you're, you're spending money and, um, and you're probably gonna lose money. Uh, it's pretty expensive when you break down the kilometer cost. But in my situation, um, I write off some of it for business use because most of the time I hop in the car, it is gonna be for some sort of business or another. I also don't drive like that many kilometers when you look at my previous cars, the first one was one that I bought outright, um, used, and it was not like too expensive, it was like $24,000. And what I noticed is that after the warranty was up on a German car, it was like a pretty baseline BMW. It started costing quite a bit for like oil changes, uh, the depreciation month by month. But when it comes to like a brand new German car, you can either lease or finance it and pay like a monthly and end up owning the car outright, or you can lease it for a certain number of years, whether it's two, three, or four years, based on the depreciation value. And then at the end of the lease, you have the option to buy it out at its residual value. In my situation, I plan to switch cars like every three to four years just to find something new, um, maybe something with more cargo next time, maybe something sportier. I don't really know what I'm gonna be doing in four years um, and what I'm looking for, so, it is a bit of a, uh, a situation where I don't wanna get a car that I own outright because by the time I pay it off on a financing term, I'm probably gonna change my mind already and wanna sell it back to the dealership. When you lease a car, you have your um, 
down payment or a deposit. You don't really have to put a deposit down if you don't want to in a lot of cases. And then you have your monthly payment for the depreciation value and you also have your interest rate. So in this case, the car, I didn't put that much as a deposit um, because it is a personal expense being a luxury vehicle and the only vehicle that I own. But then my monthly payment was $1,564 and that was at an interest rate of about four to 5%, I believe. And just getting to the point here, the way I look at it is kind of plain and simple. By owning the car outright, you're having a lot of your money stored in a vehicle that is continuously losing its value. Whereas by doing a lease and paying the depreciation, at least it's like a payment per month that is significantly lower than owning the car. Within that lease period, I'm covered under warranty. There's not gonna be any maintenance costs. I have all the insurance and all that, but I can end up using um, any bulk amount of money or salary that I pay myself to invest in things that are more profitable than a vehicle. Um, so that's just kind of how I look at it. I know everyone's opinion is gonna be a little bit different, um, but when it comes to cars specifically, that's what I've chosen to do in my last two cars. And that's also because um, my, my YouTube and my main company operates out of a corp and I am the only owner of that corp. And so I pay myself a salary each year and I try to keep it relatively low because personal income tax is relatively high. So I end up paying myself each month just to cover my personal mortgage on the house and also the lease on the car. And otherwise I try to reinvest all the other money back into the media company and the YouTube channel and assets that that could own because corporate tax benefits are way better than personal. Um, so that's kind of like a whole like rant about like, I don't know, just basics into financing. And if you guys want to see like talk, want me to talk more about like the business side and all that kind of stuff, I'm still trying to learn a lot of it. Um, but yeah, let me know. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video. I've got a review coming up on this. Let me know if you have any questions or are looking for a new car. I'm happy to answer any questions or opinions down in the comment section below. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you all in the next one.